Hey YouTube, this is City Prepping. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video explaining how to set up 55 gallon drums in your garage for long-term water storage. And in the video I mentioned at a future time, I would walk you through and explain how I went about building the shelves. So that's what we'll do in this video. I'll give you uh, the steps that I took and hopefully this will serve as a framework or a guideline or an inspiration to get you started setting up your own shelves so you can store these 55 gallon drums underneath but yet still maintaining the shelf space that you need to store items. So stick around. You can show your support for this channel by clicking the like button, sharing on social media, providing feedback in the comments section, and don't forget as a subscriber to click the bell icon below to get updates. Enjoy the video. I'll walk you through how I specifically wanted to build my shelves. First of all, the whole reason that I built these custom shelves is because at the bottom, I wanted to put 55 gallon drums on the ground, and so I need the shelves to be tall enough to go over those 55 gallon drums. Now you'll notice there's a big square hole here on the shelves on the left. I'm gonna be adding a freeze dryer machine here shortly, so I need enough space uh, to put those in. And to the left of that, I wanna put a refrigerator. Uh, so I decided to put that hole in the shelves right next to that refrigerator and to the left of the refrigerator I'll be putting up some tools that I'm going to be hanging on a wall also I have a garage door on the far left so I need to make sure all of this fits so I can you know obviously open the garage door and then on the right side I've got the constraints of the hot water heater being there also I have a power plug in on the wall and I've got a light on the wall and I want to make sure I'm not covering either of those so again these are all the kinds of restrictions that I'm working with so of course you want to start off with plans, just kind of map everything out. If you look at the left side of my diagram, you'll notice I have two by fours on the ends. And on the other sides, the two by fours are on the front and the back of the shelves. My concrete on the floor is laid a little weird. So I, again, I kind of had to move things around for it to all make sense. And as far as the depth, again, I needed this to be deep enough to put my freeze dryer machine on here. The depth, I believe, is 25 inches. And so I had to take that into consideration when factoring in the depth. So the first thing I did is just headed down to my local lumber store, got some two by fours, uh, I believe by eight feet and by 10 feet. And of course, load it up at the store and head on home. Then comes the fun part of actually unloading it all. And of course, got to take a couple of coffee breaks here while doing my work. So now that I had my wooden place, I wanted to begin to measure it out. I always follow the rule, measure twice, cut once. And I just really take the time to make sure I'm measuring it over and over and over because again, I don't want to make multiple trips if I'm cutting this stuff the wrong way. So the next thing I do is set up the frame and I set up the vertical studs and I begin to put the shelves in place kind of locking everything in while it's all standing up. I know it's probably gonna be easier if I did this on the ground. I couldn't do this because I have a beam on the ceiling which would block it once I tip it up. And also I prefer this approach because then I can make sure all the vertical beams are squarely on the floor. There's so many times where I've built it on its side and then I got to stand it up and you know have to deal with shimming all the feet around and getting everything into place. So on one end I propped it up on a ladder. On the other end I had a friend help me hold it while I begin to lock everything in. And what I did is I used the Irwin Quick Grips to lock everything into place, get everything leveled, and I began to use uh, a drill. Did some pre-drilling, and then I used wood deck screws to tighten and pull everything together. The next part was a little difficult. This is where I was by myself. My friend was already gone, so I had to put the top shells into place. And I did this, again, using the Irwin Quick Grips, just kind of shimmy the shells up the up the studs, got everything locked into place, just kind of moved it all up. And then I begin the process. Once I get everything nice, level, and in place, I begin to drill holes, the uh, pre-drilled, and then locked again everything into place with the wood deck screws. Now, I added an additional middle set of uh, su leg supports. And the reason I did this is because of how long the shelves are. I wanted to add a little more stability to the setup. It's, it's a really long shelf. And also you'll see here in a second, I'm going to put in a middle shelf in the middle and I will obviously need a place to anchor that into the shelf. So as you can see, I'm dropping in the second shelf here. Again, kind of like that top one, I kind of have to shimmy it up with the Irwin Quick Grips, just slowly move it up. 
lock every corner in. Once I get everything place in place, uh, I begin to drill in with the wood deck screws. The only mistake I made here is I was measuring off the first shelf at the bottom. I was measuring the distance and turns out not every the floor was at level so I was kind of getting a little inconsistency. In retrospect I would have definitely used uh, the leveling tool a lot more. It would have been a much more accurate layout but it came out really well and I'm really happy and I'll show you at the end obviously. So next I put in the plywood just begin to slide it in and drilled it setting it into place with some small uh, little screws again just doing some pre-drilling with one drill and then taking my second drill and setting these little smaller screws just to lock in the plywood now you'll also notice that i added additional support to the bottom shelves that very bottom shelf is going to be carrying a lot of weight that freeze dryer alone i think is about 130 pounds and i'll be adding a lot of other stuff and so i wanted to give it an extra set of support underneath so what i did is I put an additional set of studs all around the very bottom shelf. I got it real, everything really tight in there. And then I secured those additional studs onto the primary vertical studs. Again, using wood deck screws, make sure everything's locked in and that bottom shelf has uh, enough support to keep it in place once I start loading it up. Now, the last thing I did is I secured the shelves to the wall. Now, I did this for two reasons. One, the shelves are really tall and obviously I didn't want them to tip over. And I also noticed that due to the size of these shelves, it kind of wiggled around a lot if you were to, you know, grab onto it and start pulling on the on the studs. So I just wanted it to be nice and tight. And the other reason is I live in earthquake territory, so it's important they don't tip over during an earthquake. And again, all I did is I just added some studs to the wall. I just found the actual studs behind the drywall. And then I took some small two by fours I had you know, I used a stud finder to find those studs behind the drywall. And then I took those small studs using, again, wood deck screws and secured them to the wall. Do you really need to do this? Eh, not really. It just makes it a little easier when you go about using the hanger tape, which I'll show in a second. But, I mean, you would you you can skip this if you want to. I just, I tend to overdo everything a lot of times when I do these projects. So, again, I just went and got some hanger tape. This stuff's really cheap, uh, 25 feet for like three or four bucks. And I just secured it to the shelves. I... I kind of pull it taut enough across the, the vertical studs and securing it on the uh, you know the studs that I had on the wall. And then what I did is, at that point, if you were to pull on the shelves, okay, they're locked into place nice and tight. But if you were to push on the shelves, again, they would go back because there's nothing on the back of them. So again, you have this wiggle room issue. So what I did is I took some small 2x4 scraps, uh, scrap pieces, and I just went in behind those uh, vertical studs. And I got it right enough where it was super tight. I kind of almost had to hammer them in. And then I drilled those in to the back of the vertical studs with, again, a wood deck screw. And so now everything is, I got everything super tight. And so there's no movement. So what I did is I put tension on the hanger tape by pulling those forward, the two by four pieces in the back. At that point, everything was nice and tight. And so there was just no wiggle room or movement. So at the end, it came out exactly as I wanted it to be. When I first got serious about long-term water storage, my biggest concern was, hey, where am I gonna put all this water? And is it gonna tie up all my storage space? And the answer is no. I can store all this out in the garage, all these drums here at the bottom, but yet still keep my storage space by building these custom shelves. They're just a little taller than most of your normal shelves, but by using the approach that I outlined in this video, you get around some of the problems that you have when you start building tall shelves. So again, hopefully this will serve as a guideline or kind of a framework to inspire you if you're interested in building these type of shelves to store water underneath. If you have any questions, please post those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button or share on social media. And as always, be safe out there.